Depression in children. What is major depression? It is a type of mood or affective disorder. Major depression goes far beyond the typical feelings of sadness that a child might experience. Instead, major depression is persistently sad or irritable mood that affects a child's thinking and behavior at home, in school, and with their peers. The National Institute of Mental Health estimates that more than 10% of adolescents ages 12 to 17 experience major depression in a given year. It is on the rise in both children and adolescents. With early onset children and adolescent depression can predict future episodes of depression into adulthood. Early and consistent treatment can help to lessen the risk of recurrence and reduce the severity of symptoms while improving functioning and well-being. Causes of major depression. There are a combination of causes such as genetics, environment, and psychological factors. I would like to give you also a testimony of my experience with depression. When I was a child, I was 11 years old when my father was killed. Um, and I had him one day and the other day he disappeared. He ceased to exist. I adored my father. I was 11 years old. I looked up to him. He was my hero. He was basically the only normal person in my family because I felt that I was uh, basically, I didn't fit in my family. I had a lot of problems and uh, my father and I, we had a great relationship. And when he died, I went into a major depression as a child. Since everybody was so busy in my household trying to um, make a living, they were trying to survive, they had their own emotional problems, nobody really understood or was able to identify that I had major depression. What are the causes of depression? There are a combination of causes. It could be the environment, genetics, or psychological factors. But one thing is for sure, the major depression has a strong genetic component, given that the illness can be passed on from one generation to the next. However, it's important to note that children don't always develop de depression simply because their parents have it. Many children develop depression even when there is no family history. Children are also most likely to develop depression if they experience environmental stress, such as abuse, neglect, or trauma, significant changes or losses, family and parental distress, or significant peer conflicts such as bullying or romantic loss. This is everything that happened to me. I was 11 years old. I my only parent that I could communicate with was now gone. I had, I stayed with my mom, her and I, we couldn't communicate. Um, her way of parenting was very critical, judgmental. She was very authoritative. I could not express my sadness. I couldn't express, um, the creativity that I that I had in my in my soul in my spirit and my spirit just it was dying every day little by little when there is abuse there is neglect there is trauma children go to school and that is another environmental experience for them another set of problems they have to face other types of demons in their school in the school experience which is very harsh children are very judgmental of one another they're very critical and they are very hard to forgive in this day and age 
children and young adults have a very difficult time because there are serious issues happening, cyberbullying, uh, the um, online dating, online um, criticism, uh, online uh, threats. And so children nowadays and young adults have a really bad time. And so they are just faced with so many different challenges that that then when I was growing up, when I was growing up, it was basically the factors in my home. Uh, yes, there were bullies then also. I was also bullied, but um, cyber bullying is a very scary thing and children and young adults have to deal with that today more and more each day. What are the signs and the symptoms of major depression in children? Many symptoms of major depression can differ uh, to, it, uh, with any, all the children. Every child will show several symptoms, maybe all of the symptoms, but during their lows, it's persistent feelings of sadness or irritability. It's a loss to, of, of interest or pleasure in the activities that they once enjoyed. It is um, feeling hopeless, helpless, having low self-esteem, feeling in inadequate. Um, the ma one major thing is isolation or excessive guilt or difficulty with relationships or they're having social withdrawal. They have disturbances in sleep whether sleeping too much or too little. There are changes in appetite or weight. There's decreased of energy. There's a difficulty of concentrating or a decline in school performance. That was one of my major things because my first uh, class in the morning was uh, mathematics. And uh, when I was getting ready for school, my mom would be coming home from spending the night out. And so uh, she suffered from major feelings of uh, major uh, feelings of depression as well, bipolar disorder, manic depressive. So she was angry. She was irate all the time. And we would have chaos and third world war in the morning before I went to school and I would go on the bus and I would be crying, depressed, and my first class was math. And I hated math. I I dislike math. I was bad in math because there were so many different missing links because math was my first subject and I, I, I was a basket case. I was depressed. I was sad. I was trying to uh, to hide my feelings in front of my peers. I was trying to hide myself so that I wouldn't be uh, people's prey, so they, wouldn't, um, so they wouldn't mock me or they wouldn't make fun of me. And so I would have to hide. And so that alone was major stress on my body. It was stress on my brain. It was stress on my emotions. I had decreased energy. I had difficulty concentrating. Definitely, I had a school performance decline. Um, there was an increased sensitivity to failure or rejection, indecision. I, I, I had frequent physical complaints such as a headache, a stomach ache, or fatigue. Uh, I had a lot of suicidal thoughts. And so, um, we have to remember, and especially parents that um, are seeing, are, are experiencing these uh, different uh, disturbances in their children or in their child, they have to remember that it is crucial that the symptoms of depression and suicidal thoughts, when they collide, it is a very serious and dangerous thing and those behaviors must be taken very seriously. The testing and diagnosis of depression in children. 
If you believe that your child suffers from depression, you need to talk to your child's doctor, the pediatrician, and have them schedule an appointment with a psychologist or a psychiatrist, someone, a doctor who specializes in children. An accurate diagnosis and early treatment are keys to success in managing depression in children. Always keep a log of their behavior. That is a good, um, sensible recommendation that I can make to you. Keep a log of their behavior because sometimes uh, parents, they get involved emotionally. Um, I, I like to bring, um, I like to bring content regarding children because even though I do not have children, I was never able to have children. I was a child once and I was a child that I was neglected. I was molested. I was depressed. I had major disorders, major depressive disorders. I had major anxiety. I suffered from uh, PTSD. I suffered from grieving my father's death. And I went into shock when he died and I was only 11 years old. So um, everything that I am speaking with you about when I speak about children I speak from a place that I was a child and I did not receive certain things that that led me to have a lot of problems as an adult and so um, unfortunately my mother could not recognize that I was depressed and and that led me down many dark paths um, there's early treatment and there are many treatments to reduce uh, distress improve functioning and any or, and preventing future depression episodes but without treatment your child's depression could persist for longer and and become more increasingly severe and also have major problems in school and there could be serious side effects. There are different types of therapy. There's cognitive behavioral therapy, there's interpersonal therapies, and there's our family therapies. Now, let us talk about if you are a parent and you are a Christian and you have a child that is depressed. Let's talk a little bit about that. There is a lot of misconceptions about depression. Uh, a lot of people think that depression is not real. Depression is a real illness that impacts the brain's ability to function as it should. There's also a misconception that depression is a sin. Why? Because being depressed means you're failing to trust God. But being depressed means you are failing to be joyful in all things or to give thanks to God. Depression is an illness. It is not a sin. Just like you get a cold or you suffer from back pain or any other physical illness. Uh, it sounds, it, it's, it's reality. We get sick. God created a perfect world, but when evil entered the world, perfection was shattered and the world was never the same. We will suffer in some ways from the results of evil breaking into God's perfect creation. So God created a perfect world. And yes, mental illness is, is, is real. And just like we have triggers and roots to our behavior, which is basically the core to the triggers and roots is an emotional response to trauma, to abuse, to neglect. Children also suffer of the same symptoms and the same consequences, and they also have roots. When we become, when we fall into depression, the first thing that comes to our mind is, God doesn't care. God doesn't see me. God uh, is not with me. Uh, I don't, I, God doesn't care about me. He doesn't, he doesn't care about what I'm going through. 
that is the first thing that we go through when we get sick, when we get depressed, when we get anxious. And so being a parent of a child that has depression, especially if you are a Christian parent, I, I, I let me tell you, depression is not the fault of the person who is suffering. It is a difficult trial that can refine someone's faith, but it is not a punishment for sin. Depression is not a punishment from God. And the child should be able to have the freedom to express their feelings with you as the parent. Even in Jesus' day, people were eager to ascribe blame for illness and disabilities, but he challenged their assumptions by saying in John 9, 1 through 3, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? And Jesus responded, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. Jesus answered, this happened so the power of God could be seen in him. That is amazing because we all go through different trials and different tribulations. We just have to stay open that if we are in Christ and we have a child or you have a child that has depression, okay, and you go speak to your pastor, just be sure and be careful to research everything, to keep a log, go to a doctor that will prescribe therapy because if your pastor is religious and he doesn't believe in antidepressants or he doesn't believe in psychiatrists then he's going to steer you away from your child's treatment and that could be very very dangerous so in jesus's world there were all kinds of sicknesses and he uses doctors, he uses medications, he uses therapies, he uses every tool imaginable to bring us back to wholeness. But we have to, all of us, if I would have a friend that is depressed or a sister or a brother, I would do the same things that I am advising you. I would advise that person that is depressed to always have someone close to them that they could open up their feelings, that they could speak to, very vulnerable, very real. And also, if you are living alone and you have depression, give, give a good friend of yours the key. Give a good friend of yours the authority and the permission that if you are going through depression for someone that cares for you and someone you trust, give them the authority to tell you, to bring it out, to show you, to point it out, because maybe the person that has the depression, they don't know it. And if someone in your life has your trust allow them to be able to speak into your life and allow them to speak the word of god into your life and the faith of god into your life whether it be you whether it be your family member this advice is for everyone there are so many misconceptions about depression People who go through depression are already dealing with a lot of stuff and being ashamed and guilty and condemned really is not good for them. They don't need that on top of them as great as, as, as well. We need to show people grace. We need to show them mercy. We need to show them compassion and support, whether it is you as a parent and you have a child that is depressed, it is the same, the same prescription, the same prescription. 
God is more concerned with our heart and with our obedience than how much we serve at church or how much we we how many times we can share our testimony. Our service to God is an expression of our love and of our gratefulness and of our heart. So it is important if you are serving in church and your child is depressed, spend time with your child. It is very important that your child sees that you are for them and not against them, that you want to spend time with them, that they matter to you and put aside the church for a time being and do not serve and give your child the time and the attention that they deserve. If you're a pastor or if you're a person in church and your child is depressed, the first thing that they're going to think is, my mother, my father doesn't care about me. God doesn't care about me. Especially since the pastor's life is very, it is very, uh, very hectic. And sometimes it is hard to put aside uh, the different duties uh, of ministry. And so it is important that your child in this time, that they need you, that they might be going through depression, that it is important that you give your child the time and the attention that they need. I don't know, I God put on my heart to give this message, to share this message with you all. Um, I know for a fact that I suffered major depression and um, it is, it is amazing um, when you don't have anybody that you can count on, the things, the ideas, the, the, the thoughts that come into your mind and how the enemy wreaks havoc in your mind when you have no one that you can count on. Because depression is a place of sadness, it is a place of oppression, it is a very, very dark place. I identify with the book of Ecclesiastes when Solomon, a king of Israel and son of King David, talks about the ways that he sought fulfillment and meaning in life and he lists temporary things such as pleasures and knowledge and wisdom and possessions, success, hard work and so on. And he declares each one of these cravings as meaningless. When you experience depression, it's easier to share Solomon's perspective because none of these things can lift you out of depression. The things of God begin to matter more as we or as you crave the eternal. Looking at the things of God, looking at God and our relationship with him is very important, but the relationship that we have with our family, it's more important. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this message, my Father. Thank you so much, my Father. You put it on my heart, Lord God, and you know who this message is for, Father. I pray for the person that is hearing this message today, my Father. I pray that you will enlighten their hearts and their minds, my Father, so that they can be the help, the helping hand for that family member, Lord God, that may be suffering from depression. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit, that your presence be with them, my God, as they are navigating the dark places of depression with their family members, Lord God. And just as Jesus um, told Mary when uh, she sat at the Lord's feet listening, to you, Lord God, and and uh, Martha was all distracted by all the preparations that had to be made, and and Lord, and she said, Lord, you do not care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself. Tell her to help me, and Lord, you said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is Martha and Mary in Luke 10, 38 through 42. And sometimes we give so much, so much emphasis on things, on things that really do not matter, things that don't matter, just 
spending time with the Lord in a private setting in our prayer closet, seated, seated at his feet and spending time with our family and caring for them and nurturing them, especially when they're going through a dark time. Lord God, it is the most important thing. And so, Lord, I pray that you will help us and remind us of that every single day. I pray for the listener, my Father, that you will lead them and guide them down paths of righteousness, that you will be the lamp onto their feet, the light onto their path, my God, so that they can navigate these waters of depression and their family members, Lord God. I pray, O oh God, your grace, your mercy over them, my Father. I pray, my Father, your healing hand over their family member that has depression, my God. And I just praise you, my Father, because you are truly a good father and lord you are in the business of giving us and blessing us and providing us with wholeness wholeness in every way in every shape and form of the word my father in every aspect of that word my father and i pray complete shalom for the person that is listening to this audio nothing missing and nothing broken my god and i just give you all the praise jesus in your name we pray today and always amen If you like this message, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, also like and share. If you know of anyone that needs to hear a message like this, maybe they're depressed, maybe they're anxious or fearful, maybe they're struggling with a situation in their lives, send them a gift today, the gift of hope, the gift of encouragement. Thank you for listening to my messages. Have a blessed day.